somebody asked me in one of my um, comments on, on some video I made, he, he wanted to know about stairwells and, and how, in my professional opinion, um, is the smart way to safely clear stairwells. And I know stairwells come up again a lot again. They come up a lot in airsoft in various events. Um, anytime you're doing an indoor event like an old school or a hospital or something, you're going to deal with all these commercial stairwells. And they tend to be really bad choke points from an airsoft perspective. Um, I've had a lot of games that I've been to that, in fact, the, the stairwells become such a choke point that literally one team will be on the third floor, one team will be on the second floor, and there's no movement between them for hours. And unfortunately, the admins aren't on top of it and aren't, aren't finding a way to break that up. So I'm assuming that's kind of the situation that this person who asked me the question was asking about is, you know, what, what's a safe way to do that? And what's a safe way to break that, that kind of stalemate? And the problem is, from a SWAT perspective, is the way we break those stalemates is a bunch of equipment that you're not going to have at your disposal. Okay, we, we'd use like a Rook, which is basically, it's like an armored forklift is basically what the Rook is. And we would go up to a second level and we'd breach a hole in the wall. Or we would rappel down and breach a hole in a window. Or we would come up with a, some sort of tactical scaffolding on a truck. And we'd go up there and, once again, breach a hole in the wall. Either way, we, we would make a hole in the second floor, whatever floor we had to do, whatever we had to do, or we would rappel down maybe two floors above where we had to go. We'd break in a window, breach, get our equipment there, and then fight down instead of fighting up so we had two angles, whatever. We, we'd find a way to do it. Um... In SWAT, the way we clear stairwells, it's we there's a there's a technique, but it's it's not when you know someone's there, when there's a known threat that's you know a known bad guy engaging you from that position. We wouldn't even try to tackle that. We'd find another way. Like I already said, we'd go to the second floor or whatever. Uh, the way that we clear a stairwell is more like hey. It's unknown or low threat, and we're just, we're just traveling up these stairs. Okay, now there's several different kinds of stairwells to talk about. And residential and commercial are very different. In fact, uh, modern residential is completely different than, you know, uh, older construction. Older construction, you got a lot of basement, uh, open stairwells. Okay, so, um, like the basement. Oftentimes when you drop into an unfinished basement on an older construction house, it's what we call open stairwell. There's no walls on either side. You're totally exposed. For the life of me, I have not been able to figure out a safe-ish way to clear those. I, it's, you're very exposed. Anybody down there can take a shout-out to you as you're coming down those steps. There's just no safe way to do it. You can call people up to you, but if nobody answers, the bottom line is somebody's got to go down those steps. I prefer to go down quickly rather than slow, but um, I, that's just to make me a faster target, I suppose. I mean, you can use a ballistic shield to kind of help, and we do, but uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's extremely dangerous. Um, we prefer to fight down rather than fight up for two reasons. Um, one, when you go down steps, you can see your feet, and you, you don't think about when you're going up and down steps, but most people kind of look at their feet when they're going up and down steps. Um, so if I'm going down steps and I'm fighting down and I can see my feet in my peripheral vision while I'm you know, clearing corners, it's a huge advantage. Um, if you're trying to clear upstairs, particularly commercial stairwells that kind of wrap around, and you have to turn at some point when you're going up those stairs to kind of look up the next flight, and you can't see your feet, it's, it's incredibly difficult even when you're under no stress and not getting shot at. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to get across to you is that uh, it, it's not ideal. And even the smart way to do it, let's say, is 30% successful when you're taking fire. I mean, yeah, that's better than the 15% that you usually get, but it's still a, a, low, a low success rate operation. The other reason we want to fight down instead of fighting up is because of gravity, and flashbangs go down with gravity. I can't tell you how many times I've been clearing up some stairwell, and um, somebody throws a flashbang, and inevitably it, it bounces off the top step, comes right back on the team, and it blows up right on us, which is which is fine. We're we're trained to do that, so it's not the end of the world. But um, it's it's not ideal. So 
you know, one thing we always do, if you, if you think about a commercial stairwell, that's like what you see in a school where it kind of wraps around, right? And there's like that little gap in the middle where you can look all the way up and all the way down. Now, traditionally, with our with what we do for training is we'll post somebody on that that first corner of that stairwell, and they'll hold up, okay? And then with each landing, somebody will post on that corner and hold up, and everybody will just wrap around them as they go up. And honestly, that's what we've done for a really long time on the SWAT side. And it wasn't until I played a lot of airsoft in commercial structures where I actually got in gunfights kind of up and down um, through that little gap that I realized it's, it's really kind of stupid. There's not much effectively you can do through that small gap. And the other issue is, is when you're looking up through that small gap, your body armor really doesn't protect much because you're, you're looking up and you're, you're going to be taking rounds down um, right in your nugget for the most part. And it's very difficult to put rounds through that little gap. Um, so in my opinion, you're better off peeking that gap, seeing if anybody's up there. And just because you can't see anybody doesn't mean there's not anybody up there, of course. So there's only so much data you can gain, so much intel you can gain from peeking that gap. I just don't see much point in sitting there waiting to get shot. What I would recommend on those commercial stairwells is staying to the outside as far as you can and slowly clearing up and slowly pying to the next landing and then at one point when you're going up you gotta turn around and clear the next landing but use those pivot points as you would if there was any any other room or any other hallway you just gotta be careful with the footwork obviously because you're going upstairs uh, going down is much easier going down because you can see your feet and it's much easier to clear down but just stick to the outside of the stairwell so you don't get exposed as much or at all to that center column uh, closed stairwells are a little bit easier. Closed stairwells are ones where there's walls on either side of you. Very easy. Um, it's, it's basically a hallway. The only issue is, is they're very difficult to advance quickly and it's very difficult to retreat quickly. In fact, you really can't retreat at all uh, when you're going up steps. The only way to retreat is, is to fall. And it's, if you get hit, you're, you're falling all the way down to the bottom, basically. But um, it's a little bit easier for a closed stairwell because you, know, you can only get engaged by, from one person at a time at the top. An open stairwell, whether you're going up or down, multiple people can engage you and there's really nowhere to go and you're fully exposed. I mean, it is, it is a nightmare situation from a tactical perspective. And that's why if we knew there was somebody out there or we knew there was someone at the top or at the bottom that was going to shoot at us as soon as we were exposed, we wouldn't go because it's a no-win situation. It's, it's, there's, it's just not going to work. Um, one of the uglier things you can do is moving up an open stairwell that has an open top. And by an open top, let's say there's a, it's a, like a landing at the top of the stairwell, and anybody can just peek over that wall, that little half wall, and engage you. So you could have you know, five or six people shooting at you and, and one poor guy going up, up those steps. It's an absolute no-win situation. So the answer to you know, how do I clear steps tactically is, is you don't. You find an alternative way to do it. Uh, go to the second floor. Just find, find a different option. Because it is, it's worse than any, you know, everybody calls the, you know, doors or fatal funnels. And I hate that term because it's not really completely accurate because the fatal funnel works both ways. But the problem with stairwells is the fatal funnel only works one way. It only works for the person who's going up the damn steps. And everybody else, it's, you know, you're, you're the little metal duck in the shooting gallery waiting to get shot. It's not a, not a good time. It's a non-starter. So my advice is find a different way and. Maybe stick to the outside of the commercial stairwell, and uh, if it's a closed stairwell, you can. If it's a closed stairwell, you can do some suppressive fire. If you know there's a bad guy up there, that can help, but you're still going to be a real close range engagement when you get to the uh, top or the bottom of the stairs, whichever it is.